in my mind, he mentioned that I, I love baseball. Uh, I love baseball before I love Jane. But <laughs> my mind defaults to baseball anytime I go to something like that. So I thought about that for a few minutes. And uh, all year, we've been hearing about the words, the new normal. So much that I'm tired of it. But my baseball mind said, what would old number eight have to say about this? Anybody here know who number eight is? Yogi. Oh, Yogi. Yogi and I think alike. <laughs> Yogi said, the future ain't what it used to be. <laughs> so my date at the beginning said 27th. Let's find out why the future ain't what it used to be. Now, i got to share another baseball picture. This one you've seen before. Uh, and if I, because I did it, the last show, the last word program I did, uh, and if I do another word program, I'll show this one. <laughs> this is the Rotary Little League Baseball team from 1967. Now, Roy, not Roy, but the Yogi, would probably say it's deja vu all over again since I'm showing this again. We're going to share several Yogi's uh, Yogiism today. But that reason that's important is because of the First row, the third kid from the left. That is eight-year-old Billy Freeman. And that Rotary Club sponsoring that team put a uniform on my back that sparked a passion in me uh, that I still have. I'm still waiting on the Yankees to come. But it led to a lot of things that Coach just said. It, it's actually why I went to school and went to class, because I had to do that and play baseball. It led to a, an opportunity to go to Elon, which uh, my, fa my family would not have been able to pay for. It allowed for me to go down there and do that. And then I, they, I had to go to class. And the only reason I went to class was because I had to do it play baseball. Fortunately, I went to class enough I got a degree. And that led to the other things that he mentioned. But that's because of the smooth stones in this room. That have, Some of them have been here probably since 1967. Uh, when I think of smooth stones in the Rotary Club, I, I could probably call a lot of names. I can't help but think of Doc Williams. I can't think, help but think of my, grand, uh, my father in law, uh, Dr. Charles Gillen, who was a real chair. So, this is all about smooth stones. But I'm here about to talk, tell you why the future ain't what it used to be as it relates to Tom A. <coughs> Fitz, <Frank C. coughs> Gotta have a yogiism, right? No one goes there nowadays, it's too crowded. Well, that's kind of what happened in 2020. Matter of fact, because they didn't want people in those crowds, we got closed down for a good while. So that's, that's appropriate. But now I'm going to try an exercise with you. I don't know how this is going to work, and I'm going to apologize to you Zoom people, because you're not going to see this. But i got a picture here, and I'm going to move right over there. I'm going to tell anybody to say who they see. But I'm gonna, I'll call on a few people. Okay, I'll show it to you guys. I don't know if see that or not. <laughs> Peyton, you are a doctor. Peyton may not know. She may be too young. She's pretty bright. See anybody? <clears throat> I see it. Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein. Can you see Albert? Yeah. Dr. Tom. I'm back here. Can you see? Not very well. <laughs> <laughs> You see anybody? I see Marilyn Monroe. Yes. You see Albert Einstein? I see I do. And y'all see Marilyn Monroe? I see Marilyn Monroe. Far away, Billy. Come on. <laughs> well, that's kind of the way the well, they not in, They're not alike in any way. That's kind of the way. Well, maybe they're both blondes. We'll give them that. I don't know. That is the way I feel about the YMCA sometimes. People see lots of different things in their minds when they see a YMCA. Some people compare us to places like Plant Fitness. Plant Fitness is not a bad place at all. I'm not here to crush them, but, but that's not who we are. Uh, I want to try to make that point a little bit with a closer look. Closer look, we see Albert. With a closer look at the Y, maybe we'll see a few things there. Uh, some people see a gym. Okay. Some people see a swim. Some people see a geo and a swim. I had to throw that in there. <laughs> to some people, it's this child care. Okay? For the kid, it may be child care and what they do. <laughs> Going swimming. For the adult, it may be something that lets them stay at work, knowing their kids somewhere taken care of. 
Uh, other people see summer camp, and that's all they see. Some people see group exercise class, and that's all they see. Some people see a basketball game. Others see a soccer game. But I'm going to tell you, upon a closer look, it's a community, and it's for all. All right, I'm going to hook this going to work. I'm going to show you a short video that maybe will describe that community in a way that you've never thought of before. In place is when heaven and earth feel particularly close together, where we catch a glimpse of the divine. It's hard to find places like that. I was reminded recently of a place like that. And I was strange to see the whole of the society. But I heard Mandarin, Spanish, Korean, I think Swahili, and English too. I saw brown skin, black skin, tan skin, white skin. I saw a woman leaving a disabled man, children with autism surrounded by love. I saw all kinds of people, in all types of shades. I witnessed a diversity of age, and gender, ethnicity, ability, and culture. I saw what community is supposed to look like. I saw a place where anger and division were vanquished by love and compassion. I witnessed the kingdom God, this place is for all. For every walk of life, they tell our stories. They recreate moments that model Jesus' love for all people. That's it. This place is for all. For every walk of life, I see a thin place where heaven and earth come together. We can breathe in that air. A place where all are welcome and lives are transformed. ain't what it used to be because of the Tom A. Fence YMCA and because of the Rotary Club and those smooth stones actually make the future a better place than what it used to be. Yogi says you can observe a lot just by watching. <laughs> Sometimes you have to watch a little closer to really see it. I've got you know, a lot of things that go on at the YMCA. I won't take time to read all those to you. The three areas of focus, though, youth development, healthy living, social responsibility, and we try hard at the Tommy Finch YMCA to, to meet all those. It was a tough journey in 2020. I'm going to give it to you uh, really quickly. We closed on March 16th last year. I thought it was a week or two. That's all I expected. But it was still hard to do because we didn't know what was next. We reopened for essential workers' child care almost immediately. And many of our people who were used to doing one job found themselves doing another job. Meals on Wheels lost a lot of their volunteers, and we had people who, a lot of our staff, uh, did a lot of that. We, we volunteered at cooperative, cooperative Community Ministries. Anybody have trouble saying that? CCC. <laughs> CCC, excuse me. We did senior wellness checks calls a lot of our older folks who were used to being at our place daily. We did blood drives. We did outdoor group exercise eventually when, they, when the uh, mandates allowed. We reopened our pool but with reduced occupancy. We transitioned to summer camp. I put without field trips. That's a job, Bill. That's a job. We had those kids there from six to seven, seven to six, excuse me. Uh, we couldn't take them anywhere. That's a big part of what summer camp is and, and also spend some of their energy. Then we transitioned to remote learning. What in the world? We were, we were prepared to be providing after school care and now we're having to upgrade our Wi-Fi and create uh, cubicles and visit more uh, software sites than Billy Freeman knew how to do, I can tell you that. We reopened our facility eventually, but at 30% occupancy with masks in all common areas. Then we were transitioned to not only remote learning, but after school care, as the schools slowly began to go back, but partially. 
we were serving three different school units who, by the way, decided on three different plans. <laughs> then came the mandate somewhere around Thanksgiving where we had to wear masks even while exercising. It was not a popular decision, I can tell you that. Then we transitioned to 50% occupancy with masks. Then we transitioned to 75% occupancy with masks. Then we incurred, or all the long we incurred expenses with reduced revenue streams. For a good portion of the year, lots of memberships, as you can imagine, were dropped and all programming revenue, revenue completely stopped. Actually, programming revenue for a while went negative because we had taken in some for programs we couldn't do and were giving it back. We navigated changing dynamics week to week and day to day. We followed the CDC and state guidelines while many did not. We showed up to work, unfortunately or fortunately, in person and served. We worked to be flexible while many did not or could not. You notice I'm saying we a lot. Uh, I got to stop right there and take a minute. Our staff at the YMCA, Peyton was a, a part of our staff during a good portion of this year. She'll always be a part of our hearts. But they were the most amazing group of people I think I've ever worked with. I heard a very wise leader one time say, don't claim credit, share credit. Well. I couldn't claim that credit if I wanted to. We have just an amazing, amazing YMCA. Yogi says this, when you come to the fork in the road, take it. And that's exactly what we did. We didn't know if we were taking the right fork or not. We were trusted and we took a fork. It was different than the fork that we were used to, but we did. I got another short video. I shared this video a couple of years ago at our annual support campaign. But I love this video because it tells a story. I think you may even recognize some faces.
So I will tell you guys that I barely missed, you know, working at the Y when Billy was there, but I did get to work with Scott Styers. And uh, through the years, also, you know, got to serve on the board with Tommy Hodges and Stan Styers. And my daughter even went to YMCA camp where Jared Dunbar helped make her who she is today. Ooh, I'm sorry. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I've got a lot of things to blame on you. Uh, but there are certainly a lot of smooth stones, not only in this Rotary Club, but in our YMCA. And it's amazing that we have three past or present and past leaders of the YMCA that are members of this Rotary Club. So a big hand for Billy and the YMCA. change my screen back because it will probably take too long. Uh, again, thank you, Jerry. Great to have you at Rotary today. Appreciate you visiting with us. Are there any additional announcements? Wayne? Yeah, two, two quick ones. I've had several folks ask me about honey. I have some with me today. If you want to get the car, you can pay me later. Hope will bill you, whatever else. <laughs> <laughs> That's not my money. And, uh, and Jerry, uh, in your presentation up here, you mentioned, you know, what if Tamari had yeah, a date here? Jerry's just telling me Tamari's birthday, so I think we ought to say happy birthday. <laughs> oh, yes. Happy birthday, Jerry. <laughs> okay. Um, so if you guys will, as we bring this to a conclusion, uh, we'll have to look at the, the of all the things we think, say, or do, first, is the truth. Is your fair law concerned? Will the building of the building of better friendships? Will we benefit?